I read this Inc. article recently that said, research suggests that in an eight hour day, the average worker is only productive for two hours and 53 minutes. And the article also added, this is particularly good news for freelancers and others who work from home. It's easy to feel like you're not doing enough when you don't go into an office. Yet this research suggests that if you're productive for just three hours a day, you're outputting the same amount as someone in the office for eight hours. So. I want to finally put the four hour workday to the test because as a freelancer of six years and as somebody who has worked from home for six years, it is true. I never feel like I'm doing enough and I hate it. And actually in January of this year, I had a business resolution that I only wanted to work four to six hours a day because I want to work on detaching my value, my sense of self-worth, all that good stuff from sitting physically for eight hours at a laptop or trying to hit 40 hours a week. I made that resolution in January. It's now June. I'll be honest. I have not been remotely doing that at all so things have got to change i'm issuing a one week challenge to myself and by myself to work only four hours of work a day for this week we're going cold turkey i'll take you guys along hopefully it'll be interesting hopefully i don't descend into madness i don't know what's gonna happen maybe at the end of this week i'm working 16 hours a day i don't know we'll have to find that out together now the goals of this challenge are one to work fewer hours to create more space in my schedule and two detach my sense of value from a 40 hour work week which is a tall order because i've been programmed to think this basically my entire life my hypothesis for this challenge is that working fewer than 40 hours will result in the same amount of productivity or potentially more productivity and potentially I'll be happier, potentially I'll be more excited for my work again, potentially I will have more time to be creative and space in my schedule. I don't know. I'm excited. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's get to Monday. Okay, so here's the Monday recap. Quickly walking through the day, I actually started my day later because I knew I could only work four hours today. So I was like, well, let me just push everything back because I know I have so many calls. So I actually cleaned and did a bunch of laundry before I started work. Then I checked emails, very fun, Slack messages. I do coaching in a group for an entrepreneur called Christina Galvado. So that's what this right here is. And I have calls for this today. So I have three hours worth of coaching calls today. And then I started planning my four hour workday video, the video you're watching right now, very video section, um, and filming the intro. And then I realized, uh, shoot, I've already done over an hour and I still have three hours of coaching calls and a call with Chelsea, my content manager. So I was already over time budget. So I was like, Dia, you can't do anything until about your call with Chelsea. So I made oatmeal, very fun. I don't normally make lunch, but I made myself oatmeal. I got to do my puzzle, it was wonderful. And I watched True Crime, which is just like my holy happy trinity. So I got to do that, then I couldn't help myself. I had to do a little bit more planning because I felt super chaotic because I didn't plan this video at all until the day I started filming it, which is very unlike me. Then I had my call with Chelsea where we chatted about lots of fun things for the business and like updates on content and everything. Then I had to do some more setup and filming for the video that you're currently watching. <laughs> and then I had my first one and a half hour coaching call for group A of this group that I'm a coach for. And then I was like, Dad, you cannot do any work because you're already way over budget. <laughs> so I went on a really long walk. Um, and I got to listen to an audiobook. This, you know, a book is good when you buy the audiobook, the physical book and the ebook, which is what I did with this book. It's called The Power of Now. And I have had it for a really long time and I have read it before. But anytime my anxiety spikes and this book, like just read it. It's so good. I, I don't even want to summarize anything. You should just read it. And then we had the second group coaching call that went pretty late till 7.30 PM. Then I had dinner, then I chill and chilling. <laughs> then I was basically just chilling like a villain and watched a lot of TV and that was Monday. Yeah, pretty embarrassing that uh, we started off on such a bad note. <laughs> so Monday was a fluke, <laughs> an unplanned fluke. I don't want to talk about Monday. I think I know where I went wrong. I, because normally I have the luxury of as much time as I need to get my two things of the day done. I didn't plan my time very well. And I think now that I have to limit myself to four hours a day, I need to budget my time accordingly. So I'm going to make a full list of everything I have to get done this week. And then I'm going to budget it into the days of like, when will I actually have time to do everything? So that's one mistake I made. The other mistake, it's not really a mistake. I feel like I spent a lot of my downtime trying to figure out what to do with my downtime. I'm going to make a list of everything that I can do that's not work related. 
I think sometimes I forget that I'm a real human being who has hobbies as well. So I'm gonna make a list of everything that I can do outside of work so that not so much of my downtime is going to deciding what to do with my downtime because I did not realize that was gonna be an issue. So yeah, hopefully Tuesday goes a little bit better, but honestly, I have to script the first draft of two YouTube videos today. So I am nervous if I can get this done in four hours. I don't know, I don't have faith in my <laughs> Okay, so Tuesday was so much better. Um, I started off the day late because I contemplated my existence in bed for longer than usual and I TikToked just a tiny bit. Then I got started with recording the intro for Tuesday, yesterday. And then I took a little sleepy girl walk over to the cafe just to change up my scenery a little bit, get some focus work in. So then I checked emails, Slack messages, I did the coaching that I do every day, and I planned out more of this video and just took notes on what was happening every single day, basically, so that I knew what I wanted to talk about and my revelations of the day, if you will. Um, then I walked back from the cafe, and then I dove into writing the first draft of the other YouTube video that I'm filming this week, which is all about the unicorn factor, U-N-I-C-O-R-N factor for freelancers or like how to differentiate yourself as a freelancer. And at this point, I knew I still had a one hour call later on in the day and I was already at three hours and 25 minutes. So then I was like, yeah, you can't do anything till your call, which was incredible. Like I'm so happy <laughs> that I had to force myself not to do anything because otherwise I would have just worked all the way through basically. I had leftovers and watch TV. And it was really weird uh, to watch TV in the middle of the day. But yeah, that was really nice. I read my little book. I did my little puzzle, super fun. Lots of fun things here, filled my day. Yeah, and what's incredible is all of this time I wasn't working, but I still got done what I normally get done on Tuesdays. Because in this session, I knew I had to be super focused and I couldn't you know, run around doing all kinds of stuff. Normally I drag out the drafts so that I finish exactly at dinner time because I know I'm not gonna give myself time off until dinner time anyway so what's the point of finishing earlier because then i'll just add more to my to-do list so that's tricky and then i had a work call a mastermind call to round out my day for an hour and that brought us to four hours and 25 minutes for tuesday a success i think okay so tuesday definitely an improvement on the work time it's not perfect but it is an improvement we're calling it a win a success if you will today weirdly enough a weird feeling came up and that was annoyance that at the fact that i was capping my hours like i found myself not wanting to track my time because i didn't want to use up my four hour budget because i was enjoying what i was doing <laughs> what i never feel annoyed that i can't work as much as i want to that is a completely foreign concept to me super wild also i realized that there is a bit of a shame feeling as well that is associated with what i'm currently doing like sometimes i find myself thinking oh what are people gonna say if they see that i only work four hours a day or what are they gonna think like they're gonna think i'm lazy or ungrateful for the life that i have that i don't work hard enough for the life that i have all this stuff and i just think we're so programmed by society to hold the 40 hours as such a golden standard that there's all this weird stuff baggage that comes along with it when we don't feel like we're fulfilling that standard and i know my productivity bar is very tied to an employee mindset so i think of my fully utilizable time as 40 hours a week and unless i reach those 40 hours you know, I'm not utilizing my full capacity to the best of my capability, so I'm wasting time and potential. Um, so that's tricky. It's a, it's a can of worms for sure. So I'm really hoping that this challenge will show me there is another way to still be really productive and feel really excited about your work. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what the, the final conclusion is on Friday. All right, Wednesday was not so bad. Again, I think we're getting better and better at it. Um, and I headed out straight to the cafe first thing in the morning after laying around in bed for a while. Um, did my emails, did Slack coaching, normal stuff, did some notes on this video. This video is actually taking so much longer than I thought. There's so much, everything's so much more work when you are filming the video as you're trying to plan it <laughs> because you end up having to redo a bunch of stuff because you didn't start with a plan, which is why planning is so essential. Um, then I took a really long break. I went for a walk. I bought myself some flowers. I had food. I, of course, did my puzzle. It was so fun. Um, 
I kind of like having larger breaks during the day now. I always thought if I worked four hours, I would have to work four hours straight and then take the rest of the day off. But I think there is merit in taking a break in the middle of the day instead of just rushing through the work. Because I think when you go, when you go take breaks, your brain can come back with like more energy. I'm pretty sure there's a study on that. And then after that, I checked my Slack messages, responded to some coaching questions that students were asking. I finalized the YouTube script for the other YouTube video of this week, which was the Unicorn Factor one. More notes on this video, then I had a TikTok idea and I had to write down that script for myself. And then I began prepping YouTube videos for my editor to edit as well. And then I took another break, another long break. My puzzle is getting the most action it's gotten in weeks. And I listened to my coach left me a one hour a voice note of notes so I just listened to that as I puzzled as well took some notes off of that and then finally I ended the day by recording the Wednesday recap so that was Wednesday all right let's chat about Wednesday it's a weird one today I also found myself getting more and more annoyed at the fact that I have a four hour time limit like I found myself being like oh this doesn't count as work because I really genuinely enjoy it or I don't think this should be tracked because technically blah 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 like making excuses so that I could do work which is something I have not done in ages so I feel like the constraints are making me come back to appreciate lots of things in my business and know that if I'm not allowed, I would still want to do them, which I think is a very special <laughs> phenomenon <laughs> of this challenge. And yeah, I'm really grateful. Obviously, I'm always a grateful person. Like I'm always, I'm very, I check myself very regularly of like, you are so lucky, you are so privileged, you are admired by so many things. Um, but this is giving me additional layers to it, especially because in my work, I've been kind of in a funk of like, frustrating day in, out, day in, day out, the work never ends kind of mode. Which brings me to the second thing of today, which is when there are time constraints, it's really forcing me to prioritize like I've never prioritized before. So I'm always a big prioritizer, but um, normally when you have a business, your list of tasks is never ending. Like there's always a million more things you could be doing for your business. The work is never over. There's really never like a period to the sentence, you know? The, so it, it makes it really frustrating because even when I prioritize, I know that the list is still ongoing. But now that I have this four hour constraint, I know where the list has to end and I know what I absolutely have to get done if I only have those four hours. Um, and that is really special, <laughs> really interesting. All right, so this was Thursday. We got it to four hours, 24 minutes, which I think is pretty good. I'm gonna try to get Friday underneath four hours, but this is progress for sure. So I started the day off a little bit later as well. Normally when I start the day late, I, it kind of ruins my whole day because I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm never gonna get everything I need to get done. But now knowing I only work four hours a day, it's so nice because I feel like I'm in this abundance mindset of like, just take your time. Like, don't worry. There's enough time for everything. So that's quite nice. Started the day by checking emails as I always do. Then I began prepping for filming the YouTube video, which I did not realize it takes me this long to prepare to film until I recorded my time um, on Thursday. And then after I prepped, of course, I filmed my YouTube video. Normally I film two videos on Thursdays, but as you know, the other video I'm filming this week is this one you're watching right now. So I only filmed one video. Then I had a really long break where I'm not sure what happened. Oh, I took a shower and then I walked out to the cafe. Um, and I'm sure I goofed around a little, which is why this took so long. At the cafe, I checked my Slack messages. I did coaching um, in the Slack that I do coaching for. And then Max and I went on a long walk and I got a bagel and it was really delicious, but I didn't get a picture or a video of it because it was too good. I ate it too fast. And then I responded to some DMs on Instagram where people just had questions about my course and everything and about other stuff so I just voice messaged a few of those back and then I started prepping YouTube videos for Matilda my editor to edit this week so I always prepare two YouTube videos for her I put in editor's notes I write in things that I think should be changed I hand break the videos I edit the audio as well and just upload everything I create additional assets um, if we need for example a screen recording on the screen like how to make things more interesting and get people to you know, obviously stay interested enough to watch the entire video. So that's what I did. And then I recorded for the four hour workday video, which is the video that you're watching right now. So there's a lot of filming this week ongoingly for this video. Normally I just sit down and film on Thursdays for like about an hour and I have my two videos done, but obviously this kind of setup is a little bit different, but yeah, pretty good. I think pretty good balance. I quite like having the, the breaks in between on my days. I feel like it makes me 
recharge, kind of replenish that energy. And when I get back to my work, that first task is always done in a more focused way. So obviously that's incredible. So Thursday, Thursday was another good day. We definitely hit our four hours. And something cool that happened on Thursday is when I puzzle today, normally when I puzzle or when I do something that's not work during work hours, I will put something on in the background, like listening to my coach's notes or, you know, listening to a business podcast or just some YouTube video or something like that on in the background because I want to make good use of the time. But today when I puzzled, I didn't have anything on. It was just silent and it was really amazing because I could feel my brain was calming down and slowly then if it did think about work it was in a very spacious way and not really this like forced you need to solve this problem kind of way it was more like you can noodle on this you can simmer on it and it helped me come up with a few things that are interesting so i think there's a lot of merit in allowing yourself to do non-work things because a lot of problems that we have to solve when we have our own businesses require a lot of creativity and creativity doesn't come about from forcing yourself to sit at a laptop and pumping your brain full of content and input. So that's potentially something interesting as well that I'll think about in the future is if I can take time. If, if there's a way to incorporate activities into my work schedule in the hope that it helps me be creative. And I can just call it creativity time or something like that, you know, and that could potentially be fun. I mean, also another factor, which I haven't even touched on is the fun factor. It was really fun. And when things are fun, everything in my brain just flows better because I'm excited about things. And if I just force myself to sit on a laptop all day, it's not, it's not that fun. It's not that fun. So incorporating little bits of fun, I think it allows me to come back and forth and everything. And we could all use some more fun, I think in our work. Welcome to Friday, where we got it all the way down to two hours and 51 minutes. I was trying to get as close to 20 hours for this week as I possibly could because I wanted it to be four hours a day times five, 20 hours. Um, so I think we did a pretty good job considering Monday was such a catastrophe. But yeah, I started the day a lot earlier today because on Fridays, I normally like to finish my work early. So I have the rest of the afternoon off. So I started the day doing the coaching in the Slack community that I'm a coach for, just answering students' questions about funnels, launches that they have, products they want to create for their digital businesses. And then I recorded some more stuff for this video you're watching right now. It's so funny. This week, recording this four-hour workday video has been the biggest threat to the four-hour workday because this video has taken so much longer than I thought it would. And it's taken so much longer than an average YouTube video would. But I'm really enjoying it. I really like documenting everything and seeing how this challenge is going. So yeah, that's why every single day I'm recording is because I'm making these walkthroughs, these recaps, I'm filming throughout the day and everything. And then I have to get all the footage up there and everything. Then of course I checked some emails, responded to a bunch of things that people needed from me, questions that people had about yeah the course and stuff like that and respond to things that the team uh, was looking for. And then I reviewed some funnel notes and outlines because we're currently reworking a lot of our business funnels and it's very exciting stuff. But yeah, it takes a really long time and it takes a lot of brain work, which is why I think having all this space is been, has been really good for me to think about the big picture because normally everything's so crammed. I don't have the breather to think big picture, think creatively and everything. So I took a long, long break and made oat pancakes because why not? I had the time and Max and I sat down and had brunch together, which is rare during the week. I, mean, I Rare is the wrong word. It never happens during the week. So that was really nice. Then I uploaded more footage for this video you're watching right now and recorded a little bit more and then took basically the rest of the afternoon off other than this short video that I'm recording right now. But the afternoon I worked on my puzzle and I actually finished my puzzle, which is, it was so much fun to finish this puzzle. Um, for my puzzle enthusiasts out there, this is the one from Magic Puzzle Company and I highly recommend it. When you finish the puzzle, there is a special surprise, a plot twist, if you will. Like there's a secret envelope that you can only open after and I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it is a very fun surprise. So I'm so glad I got that done. Max and I also went for a walk because he had to catch his Pokemon, very important business. And I'm gonna just take some time cook dinner, and get ready for the weekend. So that was Friday. So Friday, let's revisit the goals and hypothesis that we set out earlier this week. So the goal was to one, work fewer hours to create more space, which I think we accomplished, and detach my sense of value from a 40 hour work week. I think that will take longer than a week to accomplish because it is a pretty deeply ingrained belief, unfortunately. Um, but I think challenges like this where I do show myself that I can be just as productive in fewer than 40 hours will help me slowly, hopefully over time, 
And my hypothesis for this challenge was that working fewer than, fewer than 40 hours will make me the same amount of productive as if I do work 40 hours. That was indeed true. I actually wrote down a note, 40 hours has nothing to do with my productivity. If anything, forcing myself to sit on my laptop for 40 hours makes me less productive because my focus is on writing out the 40 hours, if that makes sense, instead of getting my work done, because I know if I get my work done, I still have to sit there for 40 hours anyway. And there's a really great quote that says, work contracts or expands to fill the time allotted. It's true, I am great at expanding my work to fill the time allotted. So working fewer hours doesn't impact my productivity as much as I thought it would. It makes me, if anything, more focused because when I sit down to do my four hours, I need, I know I need to make really good use of it because I only have those four hours and it makes me do really the important things. It also makes me more excited about my work. Like I wrote down, like the work doesn't feel as endless as it normally does because normally it just feels like the work goes on and on and on and no matter how much work I finish, I still need to do more work. Um, so it almost felt sometimes like it was a treat to work on the business, which I haven't felt that in a long time. So that's really exciting. And of course, finally, like the space to just turn the brain off was so nice for creativity. Um, letting my mind wander is so nice. And, you know, I think it's kind of unfair actually to say that space or time to switch off your mind is completely unproductive because I, I really think the brain needs time off to solve problems and to have enough room to be creative. Do I think I will continue with the four hours a day? I think it'll be tricky, honestly. I felt this week pretty stressed about cramming everything into four hours a day. I think what I'll do is I'll try a six hour work day first and see how that goes. So what do you think? Do you think you could get your work down into fewer hours of more compact focus work time? And obviously there's a lot of personal value from giving yourself time away from your laptop, but what do you think? Is there value for your work? as well to give yourself time away from laptop. Like, are there some tasks that are better done away from your laptop where your brain can just focus on relaxing? Let me know, let's discuss. I think this is an important topic and I wanna know what you think. But yeah, I would call this challenge a success. So I hope it's enjoyable to watch. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.